Yo, YouTube, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome back to the vlogging channel. It's your boy, Roddy. Be back in the cayenne. You know what I'm saying? With the red, nice little leather seats that I did myself. Oh, man, I love these seats, man. I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, man, I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, man, if you, if you a guy, man, let me tell you something, man. The ladies love the red, man. They love the red seats, man. I tell you, I tell you. Anyways, um, I got something on my visor. Get off, get off, get off, get off of me. Now, some of you guys, or I, I hope somebody's interested in this type of car. Somebody out there wants a Cayenne, right? Somebody out there wants a Cayenne. They want it, whether it's used, new, whatever the case is. I am your man. And what I mean by that is, I'm the guy that's going to tell you how these cars function. Now... I want to go ahead and mention for you guys that don't know anything about me and my car. This Cayenne here, this red, nice red leather interior beast of a car, is my daily driver. Yes, sir. I drive this big, giant car every single day. Everywhere I got to go, every trip I have to make, from New York to Florida, this is my car that I've driven since I've owned it. And I actually have a video of when I actually bought it, and something's on my face again. Get off. Get off. I actually have a video of when I bought the car at 187,000 miles and I decided because I've owned the car for almost two years and I've put about 40,000 miles on the car since I've owned the car, I decided I would make a video on the vehicle. Now, I don't see people posting about this car in the essence of reliability or longevity. I don't see anyone on YouTube praising this car for... I don't know, lasting 300,000 miles or something like that. So, boom. Boom. Oh, let me move this out the way. I ain't got to see that. But boom. 231,000 miles on this car, man. If you guys see my last video, you guys would clearly see that I had 100, I had 230,000 miles and I put approximately a 1,000 a miles on it since that video was made. That was over a week ago. So my thing is, you guys, is that I'm daily driving this car. I see nobody on YouTube with a high mileage Cayenne. So my job now has to be what is the best information I can give to someone that's trying to get into this car, okay? So we're not going to waste any other time. I'm going to put this on a box right here because, you know, I ain't got nothing to put my camera on. So we're going to put this on a box right here. We're just going to get this started. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Oh, I can't zoom out. Okay, never mind. And I got my phone right here, okay? We in the car. So we just go sit in this hot-ass car and we're going to make this video. Now, I put in my notes my take on the reliability of this car, longevity, how much money it would cost you to maintain it, all of that good, juicy stuff, my final thoughts on the car in this video. So please, if you like videos like this if you like the porsche cayenne and this goes for any model they're virtually all the same obviously the newer models will be more um reliable than the older ones but pretty much the newer ones come with the same problems as the older ones they're just more refined but it's still the same car at the end of the day they still have the same parts pretty much the same engines they're just a newer version so i'm gonna go open my phone right now as you guys can see we got we got an Android, you know what I'm saying? I don't I'm not happy about this. I got an Android. Now, I'm going to give you guys my notes on this car. So first of all, I own the Porsche 955S. That is from 2003 to 2006 that this car was the 955 version. So, this is for this version in particular you may have to get like the information is going to be for my car specifically i have an 05 porsche cayenne s and this car is the one with the most problems on it so it's surprising that it got to this high mileage but i'm going to explain all that in the video so this is for the first gen the first generation models like i said the other models may be slightly different but they're all relatively the same speaking so, the known issues for this car that I'm in right now is the coolant pipes. They have weak coolant pipes. They do. They just, uh, they may like symptoms of a weak coolant pipe. You guys may notice uh, you're driving on the highway and the coolant pipes burst. 
not a big deal if your car has a lot of miles on it if you see a cayenne with a lot of miles on it there's a 80 percent chance that the coolant pipes were already replaced if you buy a cayenne and you suspect that the coolant pipes were not replaced with the steel upgraded ones uh, that should be the first thing you should do with that with that car because there's a 99 percent chance that those pipes are going to burst on you i got lucky and when I was changing my starter on this car, I, I discovered that the coolant pipes on this particular car that I have were actually changed and upgraded to the metal ones. So I don't actually have a coolant issue, but it is a possibility that it that within the car's life cycle that the coolant pipes busted on this car. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is the Cardian shaft bearing may become very weak and the rubber around it can become brittle and destroy and deteriorate over time and the cardian shaft on your center console you may be driving one day and you may feel like a boop 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 not kidding because it happened to me before it feels like that doo -doo 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 -doo. that means that your cardian shaft um was destroyed not a big deal it's just that the the rubber is weak on the car and the cardian shaft um the rubber has to get replaced it, it, it's just a weak rubber bush um bushing bearing that they the rubber they put around the bearing is super weak so it's an easy thing to um diy if you want you would have to like replace the bearing but obviously shops are going to want to replace the whole drive shaft and that's a lot of money so if you're mechanically inclined you may want to go under there like i did and just replace it myself you could do it with some household tools if you want to or if you're just like one of those guys that just you know want genuine Porsche parts well that's gonna run you like a thousand dollars buddy so have fun anyways we're going to move on to the next one the coils um this car has uh is a v8 obviously it runs on um spark plugs and coils you know to fire get the ignition going the coils may become um, they just randomly may misfire and, you know, they may randomly just, like, give you a check engine light. If you ever get a check engine light on one of these cars, 99% of the time is because a coil went bad. One of the coils went bad and you have to figure out which one it is. Not a bad thing, you know, sometimes the coils may just die just because they die. Uh, you could easily just go to an O'Reilly's or AutoZone and buy a coil for $40 and just, you know, keep one in your trunk. But if the coil ever goes bad, it's a cheap fix, but you know, they do go bad on these cars. So you need to keep an eye out for that. Now, the main issue, the biggest issue this car has, like just the most damaged, destructive issue this car could have is something called cylinder scoring um, that could happen on the S models. It's, it's pretty much um, independent of the S models on the Cayennes. It mainly happens on the S models for some weird reason, I guess, because, uh, well, the engines, um, the engines inside have a coating, and if they're not lubricated properly, as far as I remember, the the cylinder can get messed up in like score. You know, get scored up, and the cylinder won't run properly. You have to get a new engine, or you have to get the engine, uh, you know, resurfaced or whatever they do to the engine inside of it. Now. A lot of people don't buy the S for that particular reason, but I'm going to give you guys a tip today for if you're trying to buy a Cayenne S and you're scared that it may have cylinder scoring. Now, I know some cars have lifter tap. You hear, like, you may hear Cayennes, um, you may be, like, in the market for a Cayenne, you may hear it go tap, 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 tap. That is not cylinder scoring. Cylinder scoring is a louder tap, 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 tap. That's how cylinder scoring is. If you hear light taps, Tap, 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 tap. While the car is idling, that is the that is okay. But if you hear a loud, like a loud slapping tap, like tap, 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 then it's safe to assume that that car may have cylinder scoring. Now, because Cayennes, uh, the Cayennes have loud uh, lift the tap, lift the click. Um, you guys can go on YouTube and and and, and research um, lift their lift their ticking on cars or whatever. It's completely normal. You know, some cars may need more oil. Like, these Cayennes burn oil, you know. So, you guys, like, cylinder scoring is, like, hard to diagnose. But I'm 100% sure you would know if you have cylinder scoring. And this is also why I want to explain to you guys that you want to get 
a higher mileage Cayenne. I'm gonna explain why. Similar scoring only mainly applies to any car in colder climates. To be specifically, it mainly happens to cars in colder climates. Very rarely ever happens to any car in hotter climates, mainly in colder climates. And it would mainly only ever happen to your car or engine in your Cayenne S if it's like under 50 to 70,000 miles. If it hasn't happened between 50 and 70,000 miles and you get your car up to 100, 120,000 miles and counting, it won't affect your car. So if your car is at 105,000 miles, 150,000 miles, or in my case, 230,000 miles, it's safe to assume that your car will never develop that problem. If it would have already happened, it would have already happened and it would have probably already got the engine replaced. Like the, the problem happens early on in the car's life and it's nothing you know you can do about it. That's pretty much the bottom line. Now we're gonna move on from that and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna explain my ownership experience to you guys real quickly now uh, like i said i owned this car since i got it at 187,000 miles it's been an extremely reliable vehicle to me i love this car man i drive this car every day it looks great i get compliments on it i got the red seats to compliment it now you know what i'm saying so it looks it's a phenomenal car performs great i do need to change the rotors on it but we ain't gonna talk about that because i gotta get to the rotors but other than that the only problems i'm have with this car is like i said i replaced the drive shaft bearing at 190k i replaced the starter at 227,000 miles and that same starter that i replaced at 227,000 miles was actually dying for two years like on a Cayenne, you know if your start is going bad, if you're turning, if you ever start a Cayenne and you hear it like slowly, whirring, like, rrr, 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 that's how you know your start is going bad. If it's not a fast spin and it's a slow spin, you know that it's going bad. But because these starters are so hard to replace, like they're expensive to replace if you don't know anybody that knows how to replace them. And because they're so, um, you know, they're so like... Uh, they just robust, man. They work like they work like they, they last a really long time. It's not going to really be a big deal. So I pretty much rolled out this uh, this starter from 187,000 miles when I got the car to 227,000 miles. So that was over two years of service on a bad starter, which was amazing. And not only that, um, I saved a lot of money with the starter i bought a used starter off of a low mileage cayenne and got somebody to throw it in for like a hundred bucks so i saved a lot of money doing the starter and also the starter like you know like i don't know i, I think the starter was uh or the original starter because when i actually got the starter the starter I took the starter out and the starter looked like it was just like it was OEM so it was literally it looked like um, the starter has never been changed before so I probably would never have to change the starter again and a funny story about the starter before we move on to the next thing is my friend one time he bought a Subaru and he was talking about how my car was gonna blow up oh I bought a new Subaru it's gonna your car is not gonna last longer than my Subaru I was like okay buddy I see you tomorrow at work he buys a new Subaru. He's talking about, oh, my Cayenne's going to blow up. The engine's going to blow up. Guess what happens to him? His starter and his alternator died the same day or the next day. One or the other. I think uh, the night he bought it, he tried to go start it the next morning for work. And he could. He had to return to the dealership because the starter and the alternator was down. And they said, oh, you have to pay for both. So he didn't go to work that day. See? Don't talk about the Cayenne, man. That's what happens when you talk about the Cayenne. Um... We're gonna move on you guys. So I replaced the starter and I replaced the coils um twice due to an oil leak. I had an oil leak and long story short, oil was leaking into the spark plugs and they contaminated the coil, the spark plug, and I got a miss engine um I got a misfire, excuse me, and I had to replace uh the coils. And my horn died. For some red reason, my horn died. I don't I think a fuse a horn my horn fuse went out because when I lock my car I still get the beep the beep beep I still get the beep so it's the beep of the horn when I lock the car I still get the beep but when I press my horn the beep doesn't work 
And I haven't thought about it because I don't use my horn a lot. I'm not really like a fast driver or nothing like that. So not a big deal, but I could easily get that fixed. All the problems I had on the car since 187,000 miles. So that goes ahead and shows you guys, you know, that other than general maintenance, you know, we're not counting that. We're not counting like tires or anything like that. That's just regular stuff you have to do for your car. I put on a set of new tires on this car. I still got them on this car. And I changed the brakes a month ago, and those are okay. Other than that, maybe a brake light here, you know, put some new lights on the car. You know, it's like that's just regular stuff that you do. I'm not counting that in the in the video. Positives about the car. You're going to want to buy a high mileage example of this car. And I'm going to explain to you guys why you're going to want to do that. A high mileage example of any Cayenne means that the person that you bought it off of took extremely good care and love for the car. And I promise you, these type of cars will never have made it that far if someone didn't take extremely good care of the car. And what makes it even better if you buy a high mileage Cayenne, because these cars last forever if you're willing to you know, replace the necessary parts and you're willing to understand what will go wrong on these cars, you will know that the Cayenne actually, like, um, besides having a robust engine transmission, like I said, the reliability of these cars at high mileage is extremely insane. You literally would just have to get in, turn the key, and start it. Because the brakes are so powerful on this car, they last forever if you know how to manage your brakes. The rotors last forever if you know how to manage your rotors. The gas is the biggest problem on this car. Whereas, like, if you're driving a lot like I do, you're going to spend a lot of money in gas. That's just because you're driving with a, B, a big V8 engine and a heavy SUV. Other than that, um, for the price to run the car, the reliability, the good looks... And the space, you can't beat it. I mean, this is the best Bing SUV for your buck that you can get. It's not too fast, crazy fast like the turbo. It's not like it's not super slow. I can still race in it if I want to. You know, it's still got the perfect handling. You know, it has a really good handling. It still turns heads. You can't go wrong with it. Most of the common issues are easily fixed on this car. Like I said, most of them issues are DIY or there's videos or there's forums explaining you know how to address any issues that may pop up for this vehicle they have forum websites explaining how to fix certain things without breaking the bank so this car is well within anybody's spec and range for someone that wants to have a fun car and still save a lot of money if you're smart and also some parts are also interchangeable with the VW Touareg because they were built on the same chassis and they still do share some similar parts because they were kind of like like I said built on the same chassis so you can interchange parts if you search up a VW you know I don't know let's say steering pump versus the Porsche steering pump the VWs is going to be half the cost of the Porsche but they're going to be the same part so you guys can go ahead and figure out which parts work interchangeably with those two cars so and what I mean by that for example is the VW Touareg of this year will have similar parts to the to the Porsche Cayenne of my year. So 05 Porsche Cayenne and the 05 VW Touareg will share some similar parts cosmetically and mechanically. I don't know what all those parts are. They don't share the same engines or suspension, but they share maybe some interior bits. Actually, I highly doubt that. But you know what I mean, maybe like a, a I don't know. Maybe the fuel pump is the same or they use the same brakes. I don't know. You guys go look online and you guys go figure that out. But that's all I got to say about the Cayenne today, man. Like I said, I'm going to take this down. I love this car, man. I daily drive this car every day. So if you guys are in the market for a used Cayenne and you guys want to know what it takes to own one, how expensive has it been for me? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I've spent no more than a thousand dollars running this car for the past two years just in maintenance alone this car has been pretty much bulletproof since the day i bought it and i was driving it all up and down in new york all up and down in new york what this car needs other than let me tell you this car needs more more work on it cosmetically than it needs mechanically since i've owned the car so that goes ahead that that tells you guys how reliable these cars are at high mileage 
Um, a lot of people like to bash these cars and say, oh, it's not reliable. It's, not, it's a Porsche. It's, how much you spend? It's going to break. Um, no, buddy. If you're smart with your money and you know what you're getting into, uh, it's not going to break the bank. And you're going to be rolling around in a car that you don't have to put a lot of money in in style. You get what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I hope you guys took a lot from the video. And I'm going to pretty much go ahead and end the video right now. You know, go do what I do. It's your boy, Roddy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions about my car. And like I said, I'm going to be making videos on this car. The next modification I'm going to do to this car is, like I said, I want to change the rotors. I'm going to get it some drilled rotors. Uh, I'm just going to upgrade the rotors. I'm going to get some expensive rotors and put it on this car because I'm going to be upgrading the rims. I feel like the rims on this car is too small. I live in Florida now. The the roads are clear. So I'm not like, I don't really like um, the size of the 20s. It doesn't really make the car look, you know, like it doesn't make the car look, uh, what's the word i would say balanced it, like the 20s look too small on this big suv with the giant like six gap um six gap fender um well that it has going on so i want to get some 24s i decided i'm gonna go and get 24s and put it on this car and i also decided that i'm going to probably drop this car like i said i'm, I'm only 24 years old i'm not an old dude so Maybe some of you guys may not like the fact that I'm putting bigger rims on this car, but I don't care. If you got a problem with it, go buy your own car, partner. I'm going to be putting some 24s on this car, and I'm going to slam the living hell out of this car. I already got my red seats. So if you guys want to, like I said, see that build, this is going to be the Cayenne build. And this is going to be the first Cayenne build i ever seen on YouTube. I'm gonna be one of the first people to ever do this. Um, show like go step by step what I'm doing with this car. Anyways, like I said, I hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe, drop a comment if you want to see more videos. We will be making more videos. Um, I've been extremely busy. Um, you know, I'm about to move real soon into a new house and stuff like that. So I've been saving for that and working towards that. So I haven't really been able to be on YouTube. But yeah, man, life is good, man. Oh yeah, baby. Peace out.